There's a lot of fees involved. Uh, yes, it's there a, is. It, you know, and people and complain know about that, that all the time. They're trying to change that. But it's it's also hard to do this stuff without, like, there's a lot of uh, overhead just keeping a thing like well, this rolling. Yeah. And so I think, you know, from what I've talked to them about, like, I was always very upset by how big the fees were. And then when I've talked to them, it kind of made more sense to me. And uh, so I, I think it's well, just a Well, do you want to talk about the, the fees? Um, is that relevant to our discussion today? Yeah, I, I think anything is along the way as we're going, sure. Well, the IDP, um, I'm sure people listening would be very interested in the fees. The IDP yeah, fee is, is uh, affordable. It's, uh, I think, $350 still. Uh, and when you're in school, uh, you can pay $100 and then pay the rest of it after you graduate or pay the rest of it when you're ready to take the exam. Uh, and then there's a, after three years, they, they expect you to finish the IDP in three years even though there's only two years worth of actual experience that's required now. But after three years, they, they tack on an additional $75 a year for keeping your records um, in, their, in their system. So then, let's say you, you pay the $350 and you're ready to go on to take the ARE. The ARE is a kind of a pay-as-you-go thing. It's $210 per division. There's seven and divisions. And there's seven divisions, so it's... Currently it's seven divisions. Uh, so it's about $1,400. $1,400, $1,500, $1, something like that by the yeah. time you add it all up. Yeah. And uh, many large firms actually will pay, will reimburse you for that cost. I know when I took the exam, the firm I was working for paid for it. Because they, they want you to be licensed, of course. Yeah. They, you know, that nobody's keeping, I, I think this is the thing that most people who are working toward licensure misunderstand. Architects don't want to keep you out of the profession. They're trying to bring you in because it helps their firm to have more architects, licensed architects working yeah. for it. If, if you're a firm of 30 people and you uh, can say that you have, you know, 15 licensed architects mm -hmm. on board, that's a very different it's a uh, marketing point thing for, the firm. To, to, for right. the firm than if you have three or something. Sure. Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. One of the things you just mentioned, which I just will talk about briefly, uh, you mentioned that uh, the NCARB folks will hold on to your records for you pay the, the yearly fee to hold on to the records. That may sound a little funny, like why would you bother doing that? But in fact, actually, if you later, let's say you get licensed in uh, Wisconsin and then you move to uh, Colorado, uh, there's all these sort of different ways that you can get reciprocity and uh, be able to get become licensed in the other state that you move to. Sure. Uh, and part of the way that that works is because they're holding on to your records right. and there's a right. way. Now, there's some complications in there. You should always check out the individual states and what kind of reciprocity they have because it's not all of well, the same every, across the board. But. Every state, Mike, uh, accepts the certification from NCARB. Okay. So, so the process is once you pass the registration exam and you become licensed in, in your state, then you apply to NCARB for certification and as long as you have a master's degree, they'll give you a certification. You can take that certification to whatever state you want to be licensed in and they will honor it. They don't require any, well, except for California. Uh, California is the only state that requires that additional test which relates to their state code. But other states will just accept it as it is because they, they know that that's the highest level of achievement in, in terms of licensure. So just part of the reason that there's all these fees is to sort of help that process to, to you sort of keep you in good stead with, with the NCARB folks so that yeah. certification process works, works well. So every year, are you certified, Mike? Uh, I have I've done it. I can't remember. Certifiable? Yeah, are you certifiable? certifiable. I'm definitely certifiable. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, you know, I've been certified since 1975, and I've never used it once. Yeah, of course, I, I had a. Uh, there's plenty of work here in Chicago, but I had a, um, a job one time down in uh, Georgia that I was working on, and my client said, uh, "Are you licensed in Georgia?" And I said, "No." <laughs> and uh, he said, "Well, can you get licensed?" And I said, "Yeah, I can get licensed in Georgia. I have a certification. And they'll accept it right away." So that was the end of that. I mean, that was. It was uh, okay with him. Yeah. Uh, I, we didn't actually do any architectural work. It was it was mostly consultation work. So, so it's perfectly go. acceptable. Right. But, but it sort of got you in the in the door for a project. So that's good. Right. No. Um, so before we jump off of the education thing, there's this one last little bit, which is sort of for, for foreign educated folks. Oh yes, yes, um, right. Any any thoughts about that? Um, it's the broadly experienced foreign architect program. That it's called. So we have the broadly experienced architect program, which is. Um, which is something that if you are in a 
an American citizen, you would apply for, or a graduate of, I shouldn't say American citizen, but a graduate of a uh, uh, university in the United States. But if you're a graduate of a university from some other country, you can become licensed in any of the states in the United States or any of the provinces, any of the territories, <coughs> any of the provinces in Canada by going through the Broadly Experience Foreign Architect Program. Now that, it's similar to the Broadly Experienced Architect Program in the sense you have to work for an architect who is licensed in this country for a certain number of years. I think it's five years still. And you have to go through an interview process and you have to uh, have your degree made equivalent to an NAAB accredited degree. So you have to be able to show your transcripts, you have to right. be able to show portfolio work, uh, you have to, like somebody is actually a, going through it right. and then you yeah. do uh, an interview and uh, yeah. it's, all it's the while expensive. you're also getting I, I experience. I think what, by the time you're done with this, it's probably going to cost you about $5,000 to yeah. go through this process. All the different bits yeah. and pieces if you add them all up. So here again, NCARB is trying to make it easier for people with foreign degrees to become licensed in this country. And so what they're proposing, which will probably go through next summer again, just like the uh, change to the broadly experienced architect program, they're proposing that foreign architects degrees will be accepted as they are without having to go through the equivalency program process and that they have to go through IDP and pass IDP, I mean finish their IDP, and they have to go through the ARE. So just like any architect who is licensed in this country. And no portfolio anymore, no transcripts anymore, all that stuff is going to be gone. Wow. So this will be a really good, easy way for foreign architects to become licensed in this country. Well, that would be really we interesting need, to We see. need architects. Yeah. I, I have to emphasize this. We are short of architects right now. Uh, certainly that's coming a sad in, the, situation. in the future, that's what everybody's, uh, we're short in a certain way right now, but everybody's mostly right. worried about like five, ten years from now, I think, right? That's when the as, demographics as are. the principals and firms begin to retire, they need to be replaced by um, the younger members of the firm, and there's just not enough of them who are licensed. And so it's, it's going to be a, a tough time in the next few years to make that transition. Everybody says, you know, it's tough to make the transition with new technologies, but it's also tough to make the transition with filling those positions that are going to be opening up in the larger firms with licensed architects. Because there's a, a fair number of graduates, but there's yeah. not a lot of licensed architects. That's true, the, and, and it's, uh, it's picking up, though. And NCARB is saying, they, they've been reporting that there is an increase in the number of um, interns that are going through the licensure process now. For a long time, there was a kind of a, um, a slowing down process or a stopping process even where architects were just saying it takes too long to become licensed. You know, we go through six or seven years of school and then we go on and we have to go through the internship and then we have to take the exam and the exam takes forever to finish because you take just one division a month, maybe at the fastest, maybe one division every six months. And so it, it takes literally years. I think they did some statistics on this, NCARB did. And it worked out to uh, uh, the average person who started in, in school from the time, I'm sorry, who finished school from the time they finished school to the time they were licensed was something like 20 years. It was amazing. Wow. And you know, it just, uh, uh, that, that explains why there, there are so few architects that are becoming licensed these days. It just but takes too long. It's definitely doable, and especially now that NCARB is more interested oh, in making now, it happen, it's much, it's the, it should be much faster. They, they've and, shortened the IDP program to two years from three, Yeah. and they made the exam easier. We should talk about the new exam that's coming we'll up. we'll talk and, about in a minute. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so all of these things are taking some time, but uh, there's a way to kind of make it uh, roll forward. Mm -hmm.